this time of the day is very special because this is the only time when sun reaches the front of our house in this in this way because uh, other times the trees shades so it looks very special because now the trees shade the garden but not the house so it's the house is like a is like lit up this is um, the first days of September I think 3rd of September and my name is Sarah and this is my vegetable garden in south of Sweden I couldn't make this uh, garden tour in August as I planned to because we have sick kids and it's been kind of busy but the garden pretty much looks the same three days after uh, August ended so this will go for uh, the August tour and I am up way before my family to do this because it's kind of tricky to find time. I pretty much want to walk you around the garden and see how everything looks like but the plan changed a bit because first thing I noticed when I got out of the door is that we have had our very first frost. Uh, I was very surprised because this is early. It's, it's, it's really early. Uh, some years we don't have frost until October in my part of the country and sometimes in September and then it will pass a few weeks before next frost etc. But we have had frost this night so I noticed that grass is frozen in some parts of the garden and I just want to have that in mind now when I walk you around the garden to see what we can find and how it affected the, the plants. What happens when frost comes is that most plants look okay early in the morning when it's still very cold outside but when sun shines and warms up this place you start to see the damage on the plants that are not that um, hardy but most of them will stay a while longer others not <laughs> so we will check that and in this part we will walk quite quickly uh, around the vegetable garden and we will also pass by the three greenhouses and I will tell you a bit about my projects. Well this used to be the best view of my garden every year except this one and I will never do this again. Why the hell did I plant the Jerusalem artichokes here? I can't believe I did that. Uh, <laughs> this view is is impossible. <laughs> they don't even flower this type of uh, of uh, Jerusalem artichokes. I think basically that this view does not really encourage me to come here and work with the garden. It's kind of wow well, to be here because it doesn't look that good. So, well, things grow, and I have had a really nice harvest, of course, and. Um, Except the Jerusalem artichokes, there is one bed I find interesting here. And this is where I made a summer sowing of um, leafy greens. And they are ready to harvest right now. It was a bit tricky for me with the germination and there is a lot of weeds too. Um, this is an edible weed. So I don't mind if I happen to have some <laughs> when I harvest uh, arugula. The radishes didn't uh, germinate well at all. I was a bit surprised about that, but I guess I had very old seeds. Uh, cress, lettuce, uh, here comes something that didn't germinate well at all either. Dill, Spinach. I have had problems with this uh, variety. The um, giant winter spinach, the seeds were very, very slow and they have been all season. More radishes, uh, beet leaves, uh, pak choy, 
radishes, some Asian kale, and then the daikon. I don't think you say daikon in English. It's like the, the very big long radish. As I told you, this place of the garden is a bit tricky because it's very dry, since there are big trees just behind. Uh, I should have watered more. It would have been much better. But um, I didn't have time to do that. In front of the sun here, you see my corn. And this is such a disappointment this year because the corn is very slow. I think I will have a few to harvest, but they are not quite ready yet. They are still like white. And now when frost comes, not sure whether they will be done. But actually, um, it doesn't bother me that because we have lots and lots of corn in the freezer from last year. So that is why I didn't plant lots and lots of them. I also have over here the squash. Um, yeah, the squash. <laughs> Zucchini, if you want to. Yes. And they are doing well. Yeah, so we have lots and lots of um, squash to harvest. This part grows very well. A bit too well, I think. But it's beautiful. It was my plan to... Just to clear this bed uh, to make another sowing of something, but in daytime these uh, straw flowers they um, you know they spread out uh, and there are lots and lots of butterflies and um, I have been home now for a few days with sick kids and my youngest he's five years old and he loves to come here and to to catch the butterflies and to watch them so I simply let it be. Flowers and this, uh, I don't know what you call it in in English. Swedish, it's sikoria. It seems as if this is the first time that I will succeed. <laughs> uh, well, succeed in a good way with this uh, vegetable. I have had so tiny plants other years. But uh, now it looks good. Some peas. And then this part of the garden. These are daisies. And this is a part of me learning how to grow what Lisa Mason Siegler, a new inspiration for me, uh, calls the cool flowers. My friend Anastin, who runs the flower farm uh, just away from here, she's been growing uh, the daisies like this in from summer sowings for years and years. And when she taught me about this, I wanted to learn more and found Lisa Mason Siegler and got very insp inspired by her, you know, sowing summer flowers, annual flowers in summertime to overwinter. So I have a few plants <laughs> in a project to try to find out how we can use this in a bigger scale, like in, in my climate here in Sweden. Here comes uh, more radishes and also the corn salad, um, lamb's lettuce. It's a bit slow in germination, but it will come and um, I think I need to water some. Zinnias look okay still. I harvested the beans. In here I have grown plenty of what we call the dried beans that I will store indoors dried and it's like kidney beans and borlotto beans etc. I am a bit disappointed about this early frost because in uh, just a few days I am going to the town to um, have like a small release party for my next book. Um, in Monday 
the the book is officially in the bookshops and it's a book about how I garden in a sustainable way both for the environment and also for myself so I'm going to um, to visit a, a florist uh, and to you know put my signature in the book for my customers and I will also bring lots of flowers from my garden so I was very nervous when I stepped out this morning and and noticed that frost was here already so we'll see how the flowers will will turn out after this and I forgot to mention about the um, the marigolds over there the the orange bright orange they are going to be a part of that flower project too to go to the florist and and meet my customers with a new book there are a few things that I deeply regret in my garden and one of them is actually me planting a berry. So this is a type of solanum plant with berries that are, well, you get sick if you eat them, they are poisoned. <laughs> when they are ripened, they are okay to eat. And I read about this and I thought I will give it a try simply because it is tricky to find berries that you can grow in my climate as an annual. Most berries are perennials and in my climate you can sow things but they might not ripen before frost is here. So I was very, I wanted to find, you know, things that I could grow. So I I bought seeds. You couldn't find them in Sweden so I bought them from abroad. Uh, and um, I grew a whole bed uh, one year where I have the daisies now I had the berries and they were amazing they grew like they grew perfect and they developed and they ripened but they were so hard to pick um, because they didn't ripen all at the same time and if I didn't pick them at a special you know time they all fell off the the plant and ended up at the ground. And what happened then? They all got seeded, self-seeded. And they are now like a terrible uh, weed uh, in the garden. So, and you see the, the plant is very tall. I have here, I think two plants of uh, Fisales, the um, golden berries uh, and um, this one spreads, so I deeply regret that I, I placed it in the garden. <laughs> and this place is the potato patch. I don't really have to say anything about it because it's just boring, but in here lies Plenty of super tasty and nice potatoes that we harvest and in a couple of weeks it is time in October to clear out all of the beds and harvest all potatoes to store it for winter. It's been a good season but also for uh, bugs and insects and pests etc. So behind the sunflowers I have my peach tree. I have several peach trees, but some of them in the greenhouse. And we had so many peaches. It was like a dream to go out here and, uh, you know, it, it smelled peaches in all of the garden. And then I went away for a weekend to work in Stockholm. And when I got back, it was like something changed. And then there were lots and lots of wasps eating all of the peaches. That was so sad because nearly every fruit were damaged and we didn't have nearly anything to harvest because one day they were not yet ripe and then the other day they were ripe, so soft and so sweet but all over the place there were wasps. In here some carrots. This is half of the carrots that I wanted to have before winter. So the other carrot bed turned out like this. And it might be nice for you to see that I do not succeed with everything. I think it germinated, but in springtime, 
There were plenty of um, slugs. And I made new sewings two times, but it didn't work. Lots of leek this year. Lovely. You know, in my garden it's like this. Some year I have plenty of one type of vegetable and the next year I don't. So I, I try to achieve like a level where we have enough food to eat all through the winter and to be self-sufficient. I succeed with that, but never with the same type of vegetables. <laughs> so every year we have to be very creative in the kitchen. So now we don't have that much onions. We will have onions, let's say, in uh, until uh, February or so, or March, let's say March. But we, we do have plenty of uh, leek that will carry us until next summer. Or the other way, on uh, the leek first and the onions after that. Palette colors, raised beds in a Swedish way with flowers. I just harvested lots and lots of flowers here for the florist that I deliver to. So I harvest both here at home and in my cottage garden at Oak Hill. Sinias are doing really good this year. I have a few different varieties and I love this yellow one. It's super nice. Not quite like this uh, white one that much. And this is my perennial part with perennial flowers, perennial cut flowers, year number two, so the plants are still a bit small and I also <laughs> fit in some um, some asters and self-seeded, no overwintered fennel. Now let's move on to the greenhouse. This tiny little bed in front of the greenhouse is actually new for this year and I'm very happy with it. It's so <laughs> it's so simple but um, looks nice to see plants in front of the greenhouse with zinnias and gladiolus and uh, a few other things. And in here I have this crazy project <laughs> trying to find out what kind of flowers I can sow in summer to overwinter and have an early bloom next year, next spring. And this is only a small part of it. So this is such a small part of it because when the plants germinated in the plug trays, I transplant them into pots, seven and a half centimeter big pots. It's my favorite size. It's like, it's like this size. Uh, and then I simply move them to another place. So. The thing is that some of them I will experiment with and plant outside in the garden. I will keep some plants in the greenhouse to try to overwinter. But I have also made a deal with uh, a friend of mine who's got uh, heated greenhouses. So she's got space for me to put plants in uh, and overwinter them in a frost-free place. So I simply transplant and I move them to her place and I keep some of them here just to see what difference it makes. In my gardening, this is how I do with vegetables. I choose hardy vegetables that I can sow in summertime and then eat in winter from you know a harvest that I do di directly in the garden or in the greenhouse. 
and it it helps me to have lots of food in a long season all year round in Sweden. It's not possible for us to have flowers all year round in Sweden. It's just impossible. But if I can sort of increase the season by having an early bloom from some flowers that can be started already in summertime, that's great fun, I think. Here I think I planted like uh, 15 nice Chinese cabbage plants. Um, most of them are doing well, but some of them were victims to the slugs. <laughs> we'll see how they how they do. Hopefully they will get give me something to harvest. Most often I grow plenty of the Chinese cabbage um, out in the, in the main garden. It, it grows fantastic there. I have some plants, but it's way too dry, I think. So I also have some in, in my other greenhouse. Cum cucumbers, we have had so many cucumbers. We eat cucumbers like every day. <laughs> People are starting to get a bit tired of it, but it's okay. This year we don't have that many, you know, leafy greens in summer, but we, we do have the cucumbers. So now we eat cucumbers, so we get tired of it. And then comes fall with lots of fresh uh, leafy greens and we will be so happy for that. Everything starts to look a bit not so healthy right now. It's like overgrown and it started to, to fall. This is actually one of the things that I found out that I love this year didn't know that. This is Padronas, kind of a pepper. It's strong, but it's not that strong. I simply fry it in olive oil or some other oil and I sprinkle some salt on it and eat it. It's super, super tasty. I will grow more of this next year. This polytunnel is placed in the north part of the garden, so it's uh, very shady because of the trees. So it, it grows fantastic, some things, but the things that really depends on sun and heat, this is not the best place. This is where I stand to plant my things, my compost, with summer sowings of uh, radishes, dill, and then the, um, the spinach from the same seeds that uh, I complained about in the upper part of the garden. They did not germinate well at all. And I am actually thinking about just making a new sowing instead of this. This is like the full tour. <laughs> well, this is the jungle that I planned a couple of years ago. Lots of trees, peach trees at the moment. And I cut them very hard. I pruned them very hard in spring. Uh, you can't see any signs of that right now. I am actually thinking about removing one tree. I grow blackberries in my polytunnel simply because I love blackberries. We had blackberries in my garden when I was a kid uh, and my parents made lovely jam, etc, etc. We had so much blackberries fresh in summertime and it grows so well and we appreciate this harvest so much. And then of course the eggplant. Aubergine eggplant is one of my absolute favorite vegetables to grow. It's it's very messy in my polytunnel right now. Sowing and planting made a couple of weeks ago with lettuce, uh, onion, Chinese cabbage, I think some rocket, cress. This is um, dill, some pak choy, radishes and pea sprouts. One problem for me this year with the polytunnel has been that 
uh, springtime was cold and the start of many plants were late. I simply didn't plant things in here until let's say May or even beginning of June because we had a very strong frost in late late May so it was not possible to start that early with some things. This means that some things are not fully grown up or ripen uh, in the end of summer. So best thing would be to simply decide I will let go of everything and then replant things. But I do have a few projects that takes a lot of time this year. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned in um, before, maybe I was not allowed to do that, but I am a part of a big TV series uh, about uh, gardening in Sweden this year in Channel 4, if you have missed it in Sweden. Uh, so in October, it's the start of this program and it's been, I have been busy with recording this because it's in Stockholm and I live in south part of Sweden. So there are many travels this year to, to finish this project. It's great, great fun. But I had the question, well, doing this program, did you have time to spend in your own garden? And the answer is no, not the way I want to or used to have. Uh, but Instead, I get to inspire people in another way, so that is very good. I completely forgot to mention this, I should have done it in the first place, that um, I am actually changing the name of my channel. And you may notice that now it says Sarah's Homestead and Flower Farm, because when I was new to YouTube doing my English channel, I simply had this uh, kitchen garden and all I did, the content was about it, but now I want to include maybe flowers and um, I have other ideas connected to gardening, of course, but it's not just the vegetable garden, the kitchen garden. So I thought it might be a good thing to, to rename the channel to include a few more things that can be combined with the word homestead. So I hope you like it and feel free to comment, of course, and thank you all for watching. See you soon again in my garden.